Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another video. We've got a Dell laptop. This is a Latitude. Yeah, I think it's Latitude. Uh, E6410. So a pretty popular, I think, uh, business laptop to, you know, have a second life. Uh, you get a lot of these machines um, like ThinkPads and, and these Dells are especially because of the, the manufacturing quality. HPs, I don't, I don't know if they actually are all that good, um, but the Dell manufacturing quality and the I, uh, the Lenovo ThinkPad manufacturing quality is, is really good. And uh, what ends up happening is these machines spend three to five years in a business environment. The leases end on them. They get taken out of service and they get junked or sold or trashed or whatever. And uh, it's a great opportunity for them to have a second life uh, as a consumer uh, grade machine. So that's what this machine is. Um, you know, it might have already had that second life and now it's going to be going on for a, a third life. So uh, take a look at this machine on the front. We've got our release for the lid. We have an SD card slot. So there's a little uh, filler blank here to keep it from getting uh, dusty or filled with gunk or whatever. We have a smart card slot, which can you see that? Can you see that? Let me check the focus ring here. There we go. Um, this actually has a smart card reader in there. Now there's no smart card in there right now, but normally this is like filled in because uh, no one ever uses them. But apparently wherever this, whatever business this was at, they actually used smart cards. So maybe a medical um, is a often a popular place where you'll see the doctors will have their badges, right? And they'll actually stick their badge into the computer to unlock it. And then when they pull their badge out, it locks back up again and it can't be accessed by anyone else unless they have one of those smart cards. Uh, we've got a USB port. We've got a eSATA slash USB port, a VGA output. Come around to the back here. We've got power, display port, Ethernet, and modem. <laughs> modem. Two, U two more USB ports, audio and microphone jacks, a manual toggle for Wi-Fi on off. And then we've got our media tray here with a DVD multi burner. We have a micro Firewire 1394 port, and then we have a slot here for a Express Card slot. So you can add in your additional Express Card components. Let me get that. We got to get this button back in. There we go. Now we can put our card back, card cover back in. Okay, and a little bit of damage on the corner of this, but that's only superficial. When we open up our lid, oh, I'll show you on the bottom here. Uh, on the bottom, you've got our battery, easy to remove. You just push these two things and the battery pops out. And then to access almost all the internal components, it's one screw here and this whole thing shifts off and you can access the memory and the processor. Um, the hard drive is these two screws here. You unscrew these two and then the hard drive slides out the side. You can remove the hard drive without moving this tray. You can remove this tray without removing the hard drive. So pretty good design there. All right, now we flip it open and we've got our slightly, apparently dusty, just from like a couple of weeks of being put aside, uh, keyboard here, a little tiny touchpad, a little tiny track point. Um, I always, We'll say this, the one thing that I can never get used to is from a ThinkPad to the Dell implementation with the keyboard, the buttons are too close to the track point. Whatever it is, it's just, I'm expecting it to be here and it's up here, it's just weird. Anyways, um, full-size keyboard, we got some volume rockers, some indicator lights, our power button, and then we've got our 13.3, uh, maybe 14 inch screen. And I believe there is a webcam, pretty sure that is our webcam on there as well. So decently featured. Another thing that's a little bit weird on these is look at that, like the hangover hinge that fits in. That's so strange that you've got this big metal hinge that's just like sticking out of the top of your screen. Isn't that weird? Whatever, <laughs> it is what it is. So if we hit our power button, I'm pretty sure the battery on this one still holds a reasonable charge. So let's see if we can boot into Windows at least before we have to plug in to power. So we see our E6410 splash screen as the BIOS loaded up. 
and then we'll see how long it takes for Windows to actually load up on this machine. A little bit of a delay here. I can't remember if on this system if I installed a 5400 RPM or a 7200 RPM hard drive. Um, I'm going to guess that I installed a 5400 RPM hard drive given the time it's taking to boot up here. So um, maybe what I'll do is just skip ahead until Windows is actually finished fully loading. I had to restart the system. It, it hung up and for some reason didn't want to finish loading. Um, but after I hard reset it and rebooted it, did some like please wait Windows stuff. So maybe the last time I shut it down, there was like a Windows update pending or something and that went all wonky. But anyways, we're fine. We're up and running here. No issues. Let's take a look at our specs. This is a first gen Core i5. So we got an i5-560M processor in here. That's a dual core, four thread. And that goes up to, uh, what is it, 2.6 gigahertz, turbos to 3.2. So pretty decent. Um, and uh, good instructions on this uh, with a Core i5. Um, even first gen is still pretty good at handling uh, most modern standard business controls, business processes. We have integrated graphics, so no DGPU on this one. Um, it's the Intel HD graphics uh, that's uh, available in this one, so it is gonna be using the system memory, but there is four gig of memory installed, and this is DDR3 instead of DDR2, which is good as well, because it's a little bit faster memory than, than what I, like a Core 2 Duo would have had. And then we've got a 250 gig Toshiba hard drive uh, that's in this as well. So, okay specs. Uh, let's see how these okay specs handle doing a little bit of YouTube video. Now this is a 1280 by 800 resolution screen, so 720p would be, I guess, native resolution for, for widescreen view. Um, we're going to try 1080p here and see how it handles itself. So I would expect that we're going to be okay at 1080p. Um, obviously, you know, we've got very little in terms of processing that's going on on this. But we've dropped no frames uh, at all so far. And I think that this is actually pretty good, you know. Um, you know, this is this is the kind of performance that you would want to see out of a Core i machine, and it's handling things very well. So that's my look at this Dell Latitude E6410, uh, all ready for a donation. If you have used one of these before, uh, please uh, let me know in the comments before. If it's your favorite laptop of all time, tell me why. As always, I hope you are staying safe and healthy, and we will catch you in the next one.